I'm sitting with Kara Santa Maria and John Rennie. Kara is the senior science correspondent for the Huffington Post, and John is a great science writer and editor. In fact, former editor of Scientific American. Ta-da! Uh, me, the science comedian, of course. <laughs> so now the reason we're here together, uh, we happen to be at a conference, the Science Online Conference. Big gathering of all science writers, bloggers from all over the place. With yep. the emphasis of people that communicate online with right. uh, Twitter and blogging and mm -hmm. podcasting. Uh, video. Huffington Post. Video. Right. Video. Uh, so As we happen right to now. be <laughs> in the same city together, which is interesting because we've been working on a project together for the past few months, and it's a television show for the Weather Channel. It's called Hacking the Planet, and it originates with an idea from John, I believe, yes. and John is the host. Well, I'm principal host. You two are there along with me on this. But yeah, so the idea of hacking the planet, as, as you certainly know, is uh, the idea of this is... What's we, this? What? <laughs> what? I'm doing what? <laughs> That's right. So with hacking the planet, the idea is that we take a look at a lot of different sorts of big natural threats, things like hurricanes and lightning and earthquakes, and we ask the question, Given what we understand about how these work and uh, where they come from, can we possibly use this knowledge to our own advantage in some way? So, the financial the, advantage. <laughs> because if your portfolio is not carrying a lot of tornado stock at the moment, you are missing a fantastic opportunity. Um, no, uh, obviously, more realistically, you know, you, you, we're asking like sort of questions. I mean, the, the big obvious thing is to ask: Well, what could science potentially do something like you know steer a hurricane or or make lightning strike certain things and not other ones? Kind of on command. And, you know, in a lot of cases, the answer might, in any, for anything resembling the, the foreseeable future, might be, well, may, maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, but but the, there are also still a lot of opportunities for us to look at, at what we can actually do using this knowledge to protect ourselves better, to predict when these things will Early happen. Early prediction, yes. Early prediction, yeah. often crucially important for being able to do this. But it is, I have to say, Kind of astonishing to see how how close and sometimes we are to maybe being able to do some kind of amazing things with this, and how much past research has gone into investigating things like being able to do, say, you know, steering hurricanes where you'd like them to be. Excellent. And you know, I should say before we go any further, understanding the nature of the web, uh, some people might not make it to the end of this video clip. The show <laughs> airs on the Weather Channel. It premieres February 28th, coming right, right up. Yes. <laughs> so um, just let's get that in for our, yes. for our sponsors. Um, <laughs> So, John is uh, the primary host and the guy that goes off on adventures. He is primarily going around the world uh, speaking with researchers who are studying various aspects of, of these phenomena, whether it's tornadoes or hurricanes or volcanoes or lightning. And Kara and I participate via Google Hangouts. Yep. Through, throughout each half hour episode, periodically, John checks in with us, mm -hmm. bounces ideas off us. Um, and ask us for our ideas so that we can point him. Yeah, we tell him where to go. He wouldn't be able to do his job without us. <laughs> they put my life at risk yes. in the interest of their own yes. and your television entertainment. We send John to dangerous places and we sit back and enjoy it from our apartments. Still <laughs> technically alive as of this airing. But That's right. <laughs> that yeah, presumably we're sending him into some slightly dangerous places. Yeah, There's like Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I almost killed myself snowboarding, so I think that counts. Twisted ankle, almost killed. <laughs> Exaggeration is allowed, I guess. You I have not seen the outtakes of the me on a snowboard segment. I assure you, life and limb were at risk. Mm -hmm. um, speaking at risk, I mean, it's interesting. So since, since we started actually talking about the show, a natural reaction some people have had to even mm -hmm. the idea of, of hacking the planet is, well, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Yeah, can we control sort of weather? Can we control? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Like harnessing Mother Nature, playing God, and what are the, this word comes up all the time, unforeseen consequences of doing that. That's right. As I always say, um, un 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 unforeseen consequences are very hard to predict. <laughs> <laughs> and, which is which is why a, a significant component of the show is not just this discussion of whether or not we could do things to manipulate n nature in some way, but whether or not we should in, in specific instances, whether it, it the advantages of doing that might actually in some cases be outweighed by the headaches that could be raised. Yeah. 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 yeah um, so that already came up in these initial posts about the show on, on Twitter and Facebook, social networks. The power um, of the internet. Yes. So <laughs> the idea is really there's uh, there are scientists seeking to understand all these phenomena, 
first of all. Mm -hmm. um, hacking the planet, hacking with that broader, newer sense of uh, understanding and uh, not yeah. necessarily militarizing. No, but, but potentially, <laughs> potentially manipulating, which mm -hmm. is kind of, whenever I discuss, um, whenever I do science communication, I always talk about the difference, for example, between science and nature. Mm -hmm. That science is the way that we interact with nature. It's the way we study nature, but it's also often the way that we manipulate nature to mm -hmm. learn more about it. And that's really, I think, what we're talking about in terms of hacking the planet, is taking these intense weather and climate phenomena and figuring out how to manipulate them in such a way to either give us an advantage, maybe mm -hmm. maybe harness the energy right. of these of these weather systems, or to prevent catastrophe, or at least as we said, help people get out of harm's way if catastrophe can't be prevented. And actually also a lot of the kinds of things that come up in the course of the discussions we have during the show is how poorly understood sometimes certain kinds of things that, that we think by now that people would really understand very, very well. Mm -hmm. So uh, something like lightning, electrical storms, still a huge range of mysteries about that. And some kinds it's of... It's hard to know the mind of Thor. Yes. <laughs> Science continues to probe, though. We, we try we try by studying the mind of Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Tesla! <laughs> Comes up a lot in the course of, uh, yeah, of this show. Sure. We uh, love Tesla. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, even you know some of these kinds of efforts to manipulate the weather in some way uh, go back. They're not just brand new things. So, for right. example, something like cloud seeding. There's a long history of cloud seeding going back for you know a number of decades, for at least half a century at this point. People and that's have been my doing it. one of my favorite little tidbits because I encountered it years ago in one of Kurt Vonnegut's books, the author Kurt Vonnegut, he mentions his older brother Bernard is the guy who, now I forget, in the 40s, who uh -huh. uh, for silver iodide, he discovered you could seed clouds and make it rain. Yeah, and it's actually, it's, it's that's really part of the idea of, of how Kurt Vonnegut came up with the idea of Ice Nine, which features in his novel, novel Cat's Cradle, as the, you know, the ice that freezes the world. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> but that really does relate. You, you've had several decades to read the book. You can't feel too guilty about a spoiler. But it really does relate to the kind of work that uh, that, his, that his brother was, was yeah. doing with all that. But, but the funny thing is, so you've had decades of scientific experience with investigating how well cloud seeding works. Sure. And you've got a lot of, of companies and towns and so forth that, that are increasingly interested in, in whether or not it is possible to do something, but it's still not as well understood yet about whether or not the science is really there for us to be able to make it rain on demand. So it, it's, it's a big ongoing effort uh, area of scientific uh, investigation. And I, I feel like with, with kind of, I shouldn't say too recent, but with this more recent understanding of what's happening to our planet through through climate change, um, we're starting to see, I think, more of an interest in hacking the planet. And so, whereas before, a lot of these experiments that have been happening for decades, as we said, maybe happening in a more controlled environment, mm -hmm. we're starting to really want to understand how can we translate that to the larger scale. Right. And, and what what kind of a risk is involved? It's one thing if we build a cyclone in a lab. Right. It's another thing if we try to build a cyclone, you know. And unleash it upon yes, another in a neighborhood. Country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hypothetically, no one is doing this. No. Let's be clear. No one is trying to create a tornado and turn that loose in another country. No one. No one. No. I don't know if I believe that. No one. What I do in There's my not spare one person. time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, honestly, you try to buy one volcano for a secret <laughs> mad scientist lair, and they never let you forget it. Uh, I mean, a lot of these things, things are a lot of fun, but really, the ideas sometimes, they really are very serious consequences mm -hmm. uh, that could be associated with them. Uh, but on the other <laughs> hand, um, in some cases, it's important to investigate some of these things because they're not entirely frivolous. In some cases, the, you know, the future lives could really uh, hinge on this. So, for example... These days, you know, a lot of, of the efforts to attempt to make it snow are maybe primarily being funded or sponsored by, like, different areas around, like, ski resorts mm -hmm. and so on. And yet, in the future, if, if because of climate change, we really are looking at increasing problems of, of maybe more and more drought affecting different yes. parts of, of 
the United States, different Western parts, for example, it's going to be increasingly important to understand ways in which we can try to make sure that we capture as much potential precipitation to make it snow so that you've got a good level of groundwater down in the future, too. Yes. That's what's interesting. It's in some cases looking at, at some of these weather manipulation technologies. It might not be an inherently good idea to do them, but we might end up in situations where it's the best option that we've got. So it's kind of interesting to just to explore why it is we might need to do these exactly. things. Exactly. I mean, it may soon become a moral imperative. But what's so interesting is I, I love it when science fiction mm -hmm. starts to become science fact. And yeah. it seems like that's definitely what's happening with hacking the planet. Yeah. And one other thing maybe is because it, it's always come up almost as a refrain with us. That <laughs> there is the... The, the researchers, there's so many of them are just trying to understand, but there is, uh, as some people fear, some people are talking about trying to manipulate or control mm -hmm. a little bit. And these aren't all new attempts, some are historical, and I think that, Kara, you've thought that uh, a lot of them had a, that kind of reeked of boys with toys yes. and were very male responses <laughs> because even going back to, it turns out, Edward Teller uh, thought that one way that we could uh, attack, the Att right word would be attack <laughs> a hurricane, right. would be with a nuclear uh, bomb, uh, which I thought was the epic example of when you have a hammer uh, everything looks like a nail. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, I, I just wondered how he, you know, maybe how, how he dealt with, uh, you know, domestic situations like his kids. It's not <laughs> enough to just send him to the room without dinner. Uh, this guy saw ev nuclear, a nuclear response to everything. And I mean, is it just me or maybe I've been hanging out with you two guys too much, but I feel like every episode we talk about bombs, right? <laughs> Certain words that show up a lot during the course of the show. Bombs and explosions. Vortex, we love vortex, vortex, and Nikola Tesla, um, who is Nikola lost Tesla. in a vortex. That's right. So, so if you, you know, we really, you could have a hacking the planet bingo game of some yeah. sort, the drinking game of. I think I just said vortex. Drink responsibly. <laughs> it's <laughs> vortices, right? Oh, yeah. It is, is that vortices. The word? That's right. You're from Vortexas, aren't you? <laughs> the yellow twister of Vortexas. <laughs> vortex. Wait, we don't have the rights to this music. <laughs> stay on the. Yes. <laughs> well. <Party>. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, as much fun as we're having with it, I think we're all, uh, we all have senses of humor, but we also, we're science communicators, and we do like to, uh, to we hope that the, the science is accurate and we're not, uh, it's not all blowing stuff up. No, no, That's no. just, you got to try it, you know, and then move on to other Well, solutions. and I think what's so, what's so interesting, and it's not like these things are happening behind some sort of curtain. They're really not. But a lot of times when we see things in the experimental stage, before they have any sort of kind of commercial application, mm -hmm. before we in the public are aware of them, they literally don't exist to us. And so to be able to kind of pull that curtain back and, and help us learn what's happening, you know, kind of not in the shadowy corners no. by any stretch, but definitely beyond what we know about right now is really fascinating. I mean, when when Brian and I are are in the Google Hangout with you and we see all this cool machinery behind yeah. you, we're, yes. wh what is that? Yeah. What are they doing over there? <laughs> it's been really fun. And it'll be really fun for the viewers, I think, to be able to kind of come along for the ride. Yes. Yeah, because you did get to go to all these facilities in Iceland and Hawaii. Right. And, yeah. Uh, got to uh, observe a facility, NASA facility where they were sending uh, nice uh, robot drones out over uh, Upcoming hurricanes are forming out in uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. So you know, did you just really call cool. them nice robot drones? <laughs> did I? Yeah, yeah I think you well, did. They are nice robot drones. <laughs> I have nothing against robots. No, these are the robot drones that are there to help us. Right, you got to. Right. These are he's not nefarious. To, no. Getting robot in good drones. with the robots. That's what he's doing. It's not a bad idea, John. Robots, instruct your humans <laughs> to watch Hacking the Planet on the Weather Channel. Uh, this would be the time that we would go like Thursdays at eight, but we're gonna have to just say it'll be occasionally on the weather channel starting February 28th. The February 20th, although actually... The, the It'll be on one of the seven days of the week. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's a Thursday. The premiere, yes, Thursday at 9 o'clock, February 28th. 9 o'clock Eastern. Eastern time. The, yeah. People in other time zones, make your own adjustments. <laughs> Robots, help them, help your humans with this. This so is what it, they always say, check your local listings. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> thank you very much, Cara Santa Maria. John Rennie. Hello. I'm Brian Mallon. That's a goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>